and my name is Rococo. Welcome back to my channel for another installment of Breaking Down the Face Beat Know Your Tools. Last video we covered our basics with applicators, but this week I've got a question for you. What do tape, a medieval torture looking device, a glue stick, and a pair of tweezers that can't pluck anything have in common? If you guess they're all used for makeup, you'd be correct. That's right. Today we're talking about the weird tools you find in makeup. From special adhesives to weirdly shaped gadgets, makeup has its share of things that make you go, what is that? Instead of getting stuck with a pile of these question marks, let's make the what the hecks a little bit more manageable, shall we? Categories, because manageable chunks is how we do things around here. We're going to split these tools into categories based on their use. Four main categories here, glue, stamps and stencils, tape, and facial hair tools. Let's start with facial hair tools and work our way back. Like all of our categories today, facial hair can be divided into two main sections, styling and removal. Hair removal kind of toes the line with its association to makeup. I consider the choice to keep or remove facial hair as a preparatory stage for makeup. You're simply dictating the form of your base canvas, but you're not obligated to categorize it that way. Everybody has facial hair. Whether it's peach fuzz, eyebrows, eyelashes, beards, or mustaches, we've all caught something. And since it's ours, we get to choose how much of it stays. Regardless of gender presentation, everybody has a preference on how they like to keep their facial hair. And fortunately for us, there are lots of options on how we can do that. I can't grow a beard or mustache, but I do have eyebrows, eyelashes, and being a mammal, I've got my peach fuzz. And like many, I'm very particular in how it's handled. So what do I use to do that? My top choice is waxing and threading. These popular treatments are often done in salons and benefit greatly from a professional. However, you're ripping the hair out of its follicles. So if you aren't one for handling pain, you might wanna consider other choices. I personally don't think it hurts at all, but I have an extremely high pain threshold and very fine hair. So I'm a bad person to ask about that. I suggest a small test strip with a professional instead. There are home kits available for wax, but you always want to be careful when exploring these as it's easy to mess up and or hurt yourself. If you do your own threading, you may possibly be magic. You can do your whole face with waxing and threading, and some people like all the peach fuzz removed for an extra smooth makeup base. So when going for these particular types of hair removal, that's the option they will choose. Tweezers also pull out the whole hair from the follicle, but unlike waxing or threading, you're looking at one to three hairs at a time instead of a whole section of hair at once. This is why tweezers are usually used for cleaning up and precision work more than for big changes. Comparatively, razors are the most temporary of all of these removal practices. They cut the hair down so you can't see it, but they don't actually remove it from the skin. However, long term, you're more likely to be able to grow back the hair you've shaved because you're not potentially destroying the hair follicles' ability to grow hair back. Many people go through a couple of techniques before they find their preferred choice of hair removal, and many decide that removal isn't for them after all. No matter what it is, it's all about fitting your needs and wants and finding where you're comfortable. The hair that we do keep on our faces is typically styled in some fashion. Styling facial hair basically breaks down into being about controlling hair direction and accentuating your preferred features. Keep in mind, most eyebrow styling equipment can be used on beards and mustaches. The majority of your tools for styling facial hair will look like some sort of comb or brush. No matter the material, if it looks like a comb or brush, even if it's sized for a doll, it's usually for your facial hair. Miniature metal combs that have upwards pointing teeth are usually for separating eyelashes that get stuck together with mascara, while plastic or wooden combs are usually for brows and beards. Scissors specifically made for facial hair straddle line between removal and styling as they're more about shaping what you have as versus getting rid of it entirely. Most facial scissors will be small and have rounded tips for or a curved format because it's going to be near your face and possibly eyes if you trim your brows. Small curved scissors are also an important tool for trimming false lashes. Speaking of lashes, remember how we talked about medieval torture devices? Similar as this product may look, it's actually for curling your lashes. Whether or not that still counts as torture is completely up to you. 
You simply place your lashes through the opening here and do a little squeezies and eventually you will have curled lashes. That pretty much covers our facial hair, so let's move on to our next category, tape. Tape can be divided into a reshaping tool or a guide slash flat edge. As a reshaping tool, you can either have the kind that stays on while you have your makeup on, or you can have the kind that's used more as a treatment. Tape is a facial treatment, ties back into kinesiology, and is used for circulation and wrinkle reduction. These tape procedures are taken off before beginning makeup or going out, typically. However, for temporary reshapes, you can use tape underneath and in junction with your makeup. This kind of taping is most commonly seen in the theatrical or celebrity world, though some choose to include it in everyday looks. An exception being double eyelid tape, as there's a current popular trend of creating a faux crease for what is called monolids. Monolids is simply the term used to describe an eyelid that does not naturally fold where the optical canal starts. The tape allows for the wearer to create that fold themselves should they choose to. In addition to double eyelid tape, typically you see these techniques used for temporary facelifts and faux jawlines, though theatrically speaking, you can also use tapes as a mean of creating DIY prosthetics. If you aren't well versed in taping for reshaping, it's best to stick to the products created especially for the purpose you have in mind. While I love a good DIY project, physically manipulating your face or your body should be taken with caution because while we absolutely encourage your authentic presentation of self, we want you to be safe while you do it. Remember, this takes everything a step further than visual manipulations done with makeup alone. However, you can use tape to assist you for visual only effects. Makeup shields and line tape can make sure you not only get the makeup where you want it to go and only there, but you can keep your line sharp with it. This kind of tape is absolutely open for DIY as long sure as you make sure it's low stick tape. My personal favorite is painter's tape or masking tape. If that's not your thing, you can also get the ones that Sephora or Elf or whomever sells for you'd use specifically on your face. Just like having tape as your helping hand to get the shapes you want, you can also rely on stencils and stamps. They sound exactly like their craft counterparts because they work the same. The most popular stencils you encounter outside of theatrical looks will be eyebrows and eyeliner stencils, aimed at catching the trendiest shape and making things easier to accomplish. Like any type of stencil, these are great for practicing new shapes you want to try out and assisting with an unsteady hand. Stamps are also great for getting specific shapes to happen consistently. Popularly used for face tattoo liner effects, think tiny doodles and wing eyeliner, the trick with stamps is mastering how much product you put onto your tool. Both stamps and stencils are great for beginner makeup artists and absolutely open for DIY. Make whatever shape you want. Have some fun with it. And uh, if you make dinosaur eyebrows, tag me because I need that kind of positivity in my life. If you are going to make your own stencil, what would you make? Comment down below what you'd create. Last but not least, is glue. Glue plays a very important role as a tool in makeup. Sometimes you just gotta stick stuff to your face. While most glue needs to be makeup grade to use on your face, there are two noticeable exceptions used in theatrical looks, school glue and glue sticks. Washable and non-toxic, these glues have been used for a long time to create special effects and hide facial hair. The only thing to remember is if you do use it, you always want to check the warnings and be very careful. Always use washable, non-toxic glue. And if it says don't put it on your skin or hair, do not put it on your skin or hair. It's very easy to get too comfortable with glue and you do not want super glue or Gorilla Glue or any kind of permanent glue anywhere near your skin. If you want to stick something on your skin, Stick to your four main specialized products, spirit gum, liquid latex, glitter glue, and lash glue. Glitter glue is not to be confused with school glue. It is adhesive specifically for glitter makeup products. While the term glue is used a bit loosely here, it still serves the purpose of making sure that glitter stays on your face wherever you put it. At least for a while. Glitter has its own mind. Lash glue is the most everyday of the three, and it comes in tubes, markers, and brush style applicators. This glue is meant to stick strip lashes on. 
there is a professionally used semi-permanent lash glue for lash extensions, but, well, it's for professional use. If you don't know what you're doing, I'd steer clear and stick to your strip lashes. Spirit gum and liquid latex are for theater. This is the stuff you reach for when you're sticking random things to your face like prosthetics or stuff from the dollar store because TikTok made you do it. You'll need special removers for these and absolutely do not swap these for your lash glue. It's a terrible idea. It ignores the product warnings and it really messed me up when I attempted it in a particularly questionable moment of judgment. And that's on having to explain what you don't need your EpiPen, you just need to take a break from using glue to a while. Mm. No matter what glue you're using, responsibly, <coughs> Rococo, always remember, you'll need a few seconds to get sticky before it actually works. So if it's not going on your face right away, take it off, wiggle it around, try it again. If not, reapply, and just keep going. Eventually, you'll figure it out. That's basically all of the weird tool types you'll be encountering as far as makeup goes. If you have any questions or you think of what I missed, feel free to comment down below. If you liked my video, please be sure to click the like button, and if you want more content by me, go ahead and click subscribe. The little bell lets you know every time I post. Thank you for stopping by my channel today, it means a lot to have you here. Until next time, love ya!